Hi, my name is Joe. Welcome to my shop. This is the Three Phase Liberty Bunker and it's where I make Cobra frames, frame building tooling, and today we're going to talk about something I made a couple years ago, my bike frame building, frame welding fixture. Let's get into it. So here it is. Uh, I, I designed this without CAD software, computer-aided design. I did not know how to use CAD software, and I knew that I should have designed this in CAD, but for some reason it seemed really hard. Now I'm quite good with CAD software, uh, so that's funny to me. But uh, anyway, I designed this, I studied a lot of photos, that I, all the photos I could find of frame fixtures, ones that other frame builders had made for themselves, the commercial ones that you know available for sale by Sputnik, Anvil, uh, Arctos, that sort of thing. and. Um, so I studied a lot based on what I could see and I tried to read reviews and I would call some frame builders and ask them what they thought about the fixture that they had. And, uh, and then I, I designed this whole thing on like pen and paper with just ugly sketches and then I machined it all on my manual lathe and my manual Bridgeport milling machine. And it took forever and I, I'm not saying that's an expedient or efficient way to make something like this. But, you know, if, you're, uh, if you have those machines you can certainly make something this nice if you have the time and the patience. So, the way that this works is you load in all your individual pieces of the bike frame that are mitered up and cleaned, ready for welding, and uh, you set it up by five variables that BikeCAD will just spit right out for you. Uh, you don't have to do any special math or anything. You design the frame according to you know, your top tube length and all that stuff, and then it gives you five variables. And so, if this is a Cartesian plane, this is 0, 0. 0, x and 0, y is the center of your bottom bracket. And then you go over in x and you go up in y, and the bottom center of your head tube is your x, y coordinate point for the bottom center of your head tube. And then if you go to the back here, the center of your dummy axle is another x, y coordinate point. So those are the four variables, x, y, x, y. And then the fifth is this one, which is not actually your seat tube angle, it's a relative angle between your seat tube and your head tube. So, if you have a bicycle frame like this one, with 73 degree parallel head tube and seat tube angle, you would just set this to zero. If you have a mountain bike that has a very slack head tube angle and a steep seat tube angle, then you would actually be at like 10 degrees or something, they'd be quite different, right? So, it's just a subtraction, your seat tube angle minus your head tube angle, and then you set that accordingly and BikeCAD will give you, you know, your XY coordinate point for this and for that. So, for instance, if I want to change the Y adjustment for the bottom of my head tube, I loosen this up and I slide it according to that rule with this calibratable um, reference. If I want to change the X for my head tube, I have to loosen all four of these goddamn levers. That was a mistake, designing it around this. <laughs> and then it's also, it's kind of tight, you know. I didn't want it to be sloppy. And the way, the way that I made this, it ended up being quite tight and hard to slide and hard to adjust, which is, you know, kind of a pain. It certainly works. Uh, but, you know, you set uh, all five of these variables. Same thing back here. You can change the X, Y coordinates. This would be the Y coordinate for your, for your rear dummy axle. Slides pretty nice. And again, you have to loosen all four of these freaking things to slide this front and back. And this swings around, uh, it swings about this point. So, you know, there's, there's two handles. If you loosen both of them, now you can swing this forward and backward, and you reference uh, the pointer against the, the, the scale here. Now, I mach machined this scale manually, and it took me eternity. I, took, I spent about an entire day machining just this scale because with the tools I had, uh, that was about the best I could do. And it was, it was a good learning experience, but, man, was it tedious. So one of, the, one of the big ideas I had with this fixture was, uh, you know, I wanted to make something that was fairly rigid. And if you look at the standoffs here, you know, this holds the top of your seat tube and, um, and you have similar ones for the head, head tube, but these are pretty beefy standoffs. So, you know, I wanted them to be far enough away that you could kind of get some welding access as you're going around these joints. Uh, but at the same time, I wanted them to be heavy duty enough that uh, you know the, the, the tension in the frame wasn't gonna push these around or you know if I'm in a weird position and I'm leaning a little bit on the fixture to get a, a perch while I weld or something I don't want the whole thing flexing because uh, you, know, you know a couple of thousands uh, is something that eventually you might notice yeah so I wanted it to be kind of stout uh, I also wanted the whole thing to be something that I could adjust 
so that I can do my best welding. You know, you're going to do your best welding when you're in a comfortable position. And so, uh, you know, if it's in a weird spot, it's going to be harder. And I, um, I made it so that you can spin it, which is pretty common for frame fixtures. And I also made it height adjustable, or at least I thought I was making it height adjustable. So if you loosen this, the, it, this pushes on a chunk of brass against this rod and um, now I should be able to slide this up and down and I added here this uh, strut like you would see on the rear hatch of a car or something and um, it just doesn't work you know this was uh, this is the follies of uh, someone learning how to make things and you know you, uh, you you make a wager with yourself this is what Tom Lipton always says that you you know you're you're betting these these little ideas you have about what might work you're just betting that it's going to work you're hoping that it's going to work but you don't really know until you put it into practice and so yeah when i actually put this into practice i realized there's a lot of weight on here this cantilevered forward and uh it really just wants to bind and in order for this sort of system to work and be height adjustable you would really need a more sophisticated free moving uh sort of linear rails system or something so this doesn't work, but that was the idea, was that it would be height adjustable. So I could be sitting in a computer chair, a swivel chair, and I could tack weld the whole frame very comfortably without uh, contorting my body so that I might do the best welding. Because I'm not the world's best welder and I need every advantage I can get. So this part right here is something that I added about a year after I had finished the rest of the fixture. And I, I always planned on coming back and putting in some more nice details like convenience features. And so this is one of the ones that I've completed now. And the idea is that uh, when you put your bottom bracket shell in here and you have your dropouts on this dummy axle and you're trying to lay in your chain stays, there's just too much to hold on to. It's kind of a floppy mess, right? So this guy here represents uh, basically your tire. Um, and so I made these in different widths and I have one right here. That's a 55 millimeter. This is 70 millimeter and they, they fit in this slot here. You can interchange them in about a minute and, uh, it slides forward and backward. So your chain stays taper in from wide near the rear and they taper in narrow toward the bottom bracket. And so they just, they touch along here. You put it so they touch about in the area of your tire and then um, you can slide it forward or backward a little bit. And all that does is just make sure that your chain stays are centered, but also the way that I make them, uh, you know, usually is so that uh, the, the chain stays would fit kind of up against the dropouts and up against the bottom bracket shell. And if you've done your miters and your tube prep right, it should sort of hold itself in there other than for gravity, right? So what I would do is I would set them in here and then I would use rubber bands on this end and I would be using like hooded style, right style dropouts. I use a rubber band on this end would hold the chain stays together toward the dropouts. And then down here, uh, this would be pushing them apart and that would kind of hold it all together. And if the, drop, if the miters were tight and the cuts were the right length, then it would fit sort of nice in here. And uh, you know, with these different spacers, you'd be able to use uh, sort of different tire clearances so this goes this references where the tire is but they're different widths based on um you know your sort of tire clearance that you're looking for and uh yeah something that's interesting about this was i made this bronze this brass knob here as a like unnecessarily lavish detail and i i made this in like half an hour and i was just so proud with how it came out i started at first i was feeling like it was wasting it wasting my time i shouldn't bother making something so fancy and uh, by the end of it, I felt like uh, one of the proudest things I had ever made. And I think that's, that's sort of how I feel about the whole project, which is that, like, maybe I should have just bought the tool. Maybe I shouldn't have been such a cheap bastard. But what I found over the years making tools for myself is that I actually, a lot of times I like making tools more than I like making bikes. I love riding bikes. I love making bikes. But I just really love making tools. And, uh, yeah, I don't really know you know what to do about that other than to go into making tools and so that's what i've been uh doing lately in my own shop so i made all this stuff on my manual milling machine but uh, this past spring when i got the cnc mill uh i felt like i needed some starter projects to you know sort of get familiar with the machine and the process and that didn't last too long i actually felt pretty confident with the machine pretty quickly but one of the first projects i did was this and so i took apart this part of the fixture and I modified it. And the idea is that if you had a mountain bike frame with a bent seat tube for a large rear wheel and short chain stays, uh, you might like to set this arm parallel to the straight section of the seat tube. If there's a single bend here and now it sits in front of the center line, well, you can just loosen up this cone 
and you can slide it forward to wherever. So really in order for this to be finished, there needs to be a scale on here and then a tick mark that references that. I haven't gotten that far yet. Who knows when I'll get to that. Uh, and this design, I must say, like a fair amount of the design and intellectual property that went into this, I wasn't concerned with ripping anybody off because I was just making this for myself and I'm not selling it to anybody. Um, but you know, this is based quite blatantly on Peter Verdone designed, uh, that came up with the idea that, you know, the cone should slide forward, uh, perpendicular to this sort of line. And then this design here is quite specifically ripped off from Jeff Buchholz's, uh, Sputnik frame fixture where he addresses that in this sort of way. So, you know, I just credit where credit to do. Um, but I just sort of ripped off that design and I, I tweaked it so that it would work with my specific fixture. And, uh, and that's what we have here. But, uh, you know, it just allows you to, to build a modern mountain bike, which I want to do uh, whenever I can squeeze that project in. I absolutely want to build a mountain bike on this frame fixture. So if you're going to build a frame fixture or if you're going to buy one of the ones that's available, I want to make a couple points about what I think are the most useful things to look for, what are some of the more important things to look for in a frame design. First of all, you want it to be rigid overall. So like heavier pieces I think are valuable. I've seen, especially some of the budget oriented frame building fixtures uh, really look kind of flimsier. Um, and you certainly like, I adore the design of the Sputnik frame fixture. It's built very heavy and it seems to be, from what I can tell, having never actually welded a bike frame on it, it seems to be very sensible, very strong. And that leads me to another point, which is that that frame fixture, it's very easy to adjust. There's a, uh, you know, the things slide against each other nicely. I think that fixture has six setup variables. And, uh, you know, that's something that you want. A lot of frame fixtures that I've seen people make themselves, they have a cone for the top of the head tube, and they also have a cone for the bottom of the head tube. And that, to me, is a really silly way to do things. Because when you have an actual hard shoulder on the bottom of your, uh, this is a head tube puck or whatever you want to call this, then um, you have a datum, you have a reference where you know the bottom of your head tube comes down to this shelf and, uh, and, and so you can calibrate your scales to that point. Uh, whereas if you have a cone on the bottom, depending on which head tube diameter you use and exactly how heavy the chamfer is, the bottom is going to sit in a different spot. And so you know, if you see, or if you're thinking about designing your own or something, like certainly from a functional point, it works, but uh, you, you really want a hard shelf on the bottom of your head tube so that you can locate that point in space. And uh, all, all the good frame fixtures, in my, in my opinion, have uh, this sort of design in the lower head tube. Then you want a cone on the top because that centers things. Same thing for the top of the C-tube. Something that I see people overlook a lot uh, when they're designing their own frame fixture, you know, the homebrew ones, it, and, and I tried to avoid this, and I'm a little bit guilty of it myself, is that you put in the pieces, and they're all individual pieces, and then you weld it together, and now you got to get it out of there, and that's not always as easy as you think, because, you know, you're, you're thinking about how to hold them in, in space, but when you have it all assembled, and the dummy axle is connected to the head tube, and every other point in between, uh, sometimes getting the frame off can just be a pain. Again, I think the Sputnik design is brilliant for this. From what I can tell, uh, you can actually release the, the lower head tube puck and the whole thing just slides straight off. It seems to be a breeze. You know, you would remove these from, from above and then you pull it straight off. The anvil uh, design is such that you lift this and this up and out of the tops of the head tube and the seat tube and you uh, release your dummy axle from the rear, and now you need to pivot the frame just enough to clear this, and then you can pull it off, uh, which seems to work. But I've, I've heard from people, and I've seen actually a video or two, where it looks a little bit clunkier, and it's not really a big deal. I'm not, I'm not trashing that design. But then I've seen the homebrew frame fixtures that a lot of people make, and clearly haven't thought that through. And it's really like, you know, you'd have to disassemble the tool to get the frame off of the fixture because the way that the dummy axle is supported it doesn't just come out it's like there's like a bolt through a block or something and it's this whole ordeal and so i think you know that's a big thing that people overlook is they're thinking just about how to get it together how to hold the frame in the first place but you need to be able to remove it from the fixture so that you can finish weld it and uh and move on with things so like how are you going to get it out of there once you've tack welded it together is a really important point to think about that if you're buying a frame fixture or if you're making your own uh, just, you know, think that through because people overlook that a lot. If you want to do your best welding, you really need to be comfortable while you're doing that. So, you, you know, you can focus on what you're doing and you're not in some contorted position. And so I wanted this to be rotation adjustable and height adjustable. 
and the height adjustment on this didn't go as planned. I, I, I would like to, who knows when I might ever make the time for this, but I would love to make a project of installing a lead screw to make the whole assembly go up and down with a motor on top, like a stepper motor, and then uh, a control box on it. And down here on the frame, there would be uh, a button for up and a button for down, and it would use the 18 volt cordless batteries that these guys use, and I'd just clip it on the back of the, the frame fixture stand, and then I'd be able to wheel the thing around the shop, and from a seated position, if I, if I wasn't quite comfortable, I needed it to go up or down, I could just hit the button. Now, this is something I'm sure I'm capable of figuring out eventually, but I don't know anything about uh, automation components and stepper motors, and it, it, it just it, it like warms my heart to think about that sort of project, all the things that I would learn along the way, I would love to do that if, it, if I ever found a reason that made sense for me to spend my time that way. Uh, as it stands, it only seems like a way for me to waste my time with regard to like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make some money in this shop. So, so maybe I'll figure that, I'll crack that nut someday. I'll, I'll figure out how I'm going to go about doing that. That's not a total waste of time. But, um, you know, wouldn't that be slick? You know, a good welder should be able to weld in a slightly uncomfortable position, but, uh, you know, I'll take any advantage I can get. But I should mention with this whole project, you know, I never never planned on making and selling it to people. So there are details in here that are clearly other people's ideas. And, uh, and I copied them shamelessly because I had no intention of making and selling this stuff, including the frame fixture stand. You know, this is quite blatantly ripped off of pictures I've seen of uh, Don Ferris, you know, the, the anvil design, it backs into a corner. Uh, which is great for space saving and it bolts together so if you ever need to take it apart it's not this massive thing. I stole this design quite blatantly from Don except for the height adjustment part that I added. Not that that really works. Um, you know the the building off of an extrusion that's a lot like an Arctos design. Gary Helfrich designed that and a lot of people have built their own sort of homebrew fixtures out of uh, 8020 or Mysumi or different extrusions, uh, different brand names of these extrusion. And, uh, and it's a simple way because it has T-slots built into it. It's aluminum. It's not incredibly expensive. This stuff is Mysumi. It's Japanese. It's a little bit more expensive than 8020. Um, I, you know, it seemed to have a nicer spec for flatness and straightness. So I, I went for this stuff. But, but anyway, you know, a lot of the ideas here, I tried to refine what I was seeing in the world. But in and of itself, there's a lot of <laughs> borrowed ideas here. And so I don't want anyone to get the idea that I'm... Uh, you know, I'm trying to take anyone else's ideas and use them for my own or claim that they're my own or trying to sell someone else's designs or something. This is just a project that I made in the past that I wanted to talk about because I thought it might be relevant or useful sort of points that I could make about it. Well, I really want to build myself a hardtail mountain bike and I'll be building it on this frame fixture whenever I get to it, hopefully sometime in the next couple months. And if and when I do, I'll definitely take pictures for Instagram and uh, videos for uh, YouTube. I would love to do like a project video series of it. So like from design, picking the components, specking the tubes and geometry, maybe collaborate with another frame builder who's done more of that type of bike, who knows more how to design the geometry than I do. And then, you know, mitering the tubes, I might make some custom dropouts or a custom machined yoke for tire clearance. And then, you know, bending the tubes on my tube bender and putting it all together, welding it, you know, it'd be a series of videos and uh, trying to get it done inside of like a week or two or something so that I'm not spending a ridiculous amount of time on it. And then, uh, you know, get those videos up. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, we'll, we'll try and do that for the channel here. But, uh, as always, if you like the videos, you know what to do. Thanks for watching.